Animals rain literally meaning that animals are falling from the sky. But does it mean that any animals can be in tomorrow's rain? No, that is not true. So what is animal rain? What causes it? How long it has been happening? And much more we are going to discuss in the Infinite Knowledge Show. Let's go. But before we start, if you want to be on this Infinite Knowledge journey, hit that subscribe button, and turn that notification bell on. Because the more we share our knowledge, the better the world becomes. Coming back to the topic. The internet definition says, animal rain or rain of animals is considered a rare meteorological natural phenomenon. It has been a question for long, whether is it real or not? Because, any scientist have never witnessed it. But when we look into the history, it has been occurring, not very often, but we cannot deny it. Evidence of animal rain has been recorded since 1861. When in the month of February, Singapore witnessed fish rain. From there onwards, history has told us, that it has been happening. But every time it is not fish. It had been spiders, frogs and toads, and sometimes, some other animals which had been witnessed, and reported by people during the rain. In fact the latest incident is from June 2018, from Kuangsan, China. But this time it was not just fish, frogs or toads, but it included seashells, starfish, and octopuses. If it is real, then there must be some scientific explanation. Yes, this phenomenon of animal rain is hypothesis with water spouts. Then what is a water spout, and how does it cause this rare phenomenon? Water spouts are the intense air vortex, that swirls on the water body such as oceans. They are formed by large violent clouds. It gets initialized with a difference in pressure between two points, and then air starts swirling in between them. Over the ocean, it appears like a dark spot in the beginning. In the later stages, these violent clouds form a tornado center, which is called a vortex. Now, this vortex dips deep into the water bodies. A fully aggressive water spout can spin up to 160 kilometers or 100 miles per hour. A mature water spout consists of two parts. First is a low pressure central vortex, and the second surrounding part is, a rotating funnel of updrafts. This rotating funnel acts like a vacuum cleaner. It is strong enough to suck up the surrounding air, water, and small objects. With a high-speed rotating vortex it is completely possible that, small animals like frogs, snakes and fish get pulled out of water into the centered funnel. It is not only animals that get sucked into the funnel. It can be pebbles, water and even garbage. But this phenomenon is not limited to aquatic animals. Small terrestrial animals like spiders, and bats can be swirled into the vortex. The reason for them is, when strong winds which are known as updrafts, more generally known as warm air, moves form high pressure areas which are near to the earth, and moves to the lower pressure cooler areas. This also condenses the water, which makes heavy rain clouds as well. They could reach up to to 60 miles per hour. Which can make moderate intensity water sprouts. So we can answer our question that it is not fake. It is completely real. For example, when it hailed frogs in Dubuque, in Loa, on June 16, 1882, scientists speculated that small frogs were picked up by a powerful updraft, and frozen into hail in the cold air above Earth's surface. Although no one has actually witnessed an updraft lifting frogs off the ground. The theory is scientifically plausible, since updrafts regularly pick up lightweight debris, and carry it considerable distances. When either updrafts or water spouts move over the land form the ocean, they start reducing their swirling energy due to low pressure, or sometimes when they keep striking the things in their path. The storm clouds which have formed the water spouts. They became heavy with all the condensed air, and water. Now, it follows the two rules of physics, one is free fall. The rule says, any objects of any mass, when dropped from a height, they will hit the surface at the same time. Means to say, if an elephant, and a ball dropped from a hot air balloon, they will hit the ground at the same time. And the second rule is, it is difficult to hold heavy things than the lighter one in air. And that is what happens next, in clouds the heaviest objects get dumped first, and the lighter rain later. This explains well why it usually rains with only one type of animal at a time. In example, we can say that a cloud will keep dump at weight until it becomes light enough to float. The order of dumping will follow the heavy animals like fishes first, then insects and then followed by rain. As we now know, it is a complete natural phenomenon, in history, it was related to mystical powers. As the clouds move from high pressure area to low pressure area. The high pressure areas are often near to the surface of earth like poles. And low pressure is often high in the atmosphere. Means way above the sea level, for example equators. 
so a storm gets in plenty of time, gets loaded enough with mostly water and sometimes animals. But there is one common misconception about the water spouts. That they are swirling columns of water. But in reality the water present in them is the result of condensation. And this point that shows how powerful these water spouts are. Animal rain is not the only mysterious thing that nature has done. People have witnessed yellow, and red rain as well. When people across the world heard this news. In the beginning, this unexplainable thing was attached to extraterrestrial life. According to a theory, which was initially used to deduce the reason behind red rain, included the theorist consideration of a hypothetical meteor. According to the theory, that meteor must have gone through the Earth's atmosphere, and it had contained alien life forms, which dispersed when the meteor passed through the lower air. Being small, and light in weight the small organism, or the alien life form, got mixed up with the clouds. And later came down to Earth along with the rain. But later, when the samples were tested by the scientist. It was found that, the red particles in the rain resembled spores. When these spores were cultured in a protected environment, for five to seven days, it was reported that the red color of the rain was because of the spores of the lichen forming algae. Not only that, when ground samples of lichen were collected from the place where it rained, they matched the sample in the rain. And that is how the rain got red in color. But for yellow rain, there is not one conclusive theory. The two most exchanged ideas about it include that the occurrence of yellow rain was due to a use of a biological weapon which included mycotoxins. And the other theory that is completely different, it is based upon a scientist's research which says that it was due to the feces of honeybees. So clear reason cannot be stated, it happened a long time ago. So in the end, despite the numerous reports have been filed about raining animals, scientists still approach the area with skepticism. Many historical reports are which are documented are not first-hand, and that makes them questionable. Also, for the sake of popularity, sometimes people give fake reports. However, these animals did not fall from the sky. Instead, storms fill in worm burrows, knock birds from trees and roofs, wash fish onto the shores of rivers and ponds, and drive frogs and other small animals from their habitats. So, this is the story, or the mystery of animal rain. Do not forget to tell us. Do you believe that it is a real phenomenon, a water storm can do it? Or do we need more research? And do not forget to share the video as well. Well, now when you understand the concept of animal rain. So will you believe in a new version of Finding Nemo if it is like this? A small little fish named Nemo went on a picnic along with her classmates. But she got excited, to see a swirling column of water when everyone was running away from it. The water spout trapped her in, and its 100 km rotating velocity threw our Nemo on the clouds. Where she saw the beautiful sun, and maybe angels. Later the cloud became heavy, and dropped her back to earth. The fate of Nemo kept her alive somehow but a tragic thing happened. The cloud emptied its stomach in city instead of ocean, and our fish does not remember any of this due to water spout lag. But later after all the hustle and bustle, and the effort she made to get back to ocean, one day she suddenly recall all of it and share it, and now small children fishes call her the drifted Nemo, and pray to become brave like her. Comment down below what you think, and do not forget to share your version of the story, and share this video with your friends.